What's up guys? Jared from Lethal Performance here. I am uh, just strolling through my neighborhood right now doing my first vlog ever. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this. Pretty much what's going on right now, today, October 24th, 2019 in Las Vegas, Ford has a whole bunch of the new Shelby 2020 GT500s there at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And what they're doing is their media launch. So what that is, is pretty much all the top magazines, uh, vloggers, uh, and uh, media are out there speaking to the drivers and developers of the car, the people involved in the GT500 program, getting all the information that we have not heard yet. There's a lot of stuff, you know, as we've seen, Ford was very uh, quiet and very slow with the release and maybe you know the strategy i think it's awesome it built a lot of hype around the car so you know as you can see from early on when they did the uh, the release at the uh, the auto show in detroit there were no horsepower numbers given out and it took a little while after that for them to release it and they started using the, the puzzle pictures and finally showed everyone that it's going to make 760 horsepower uh, at the engine so uh you know there's a lot of information that they've kept quiet up until this point and uh, they are finally allowing, I guess, the, the people involved to talk and chirp and, you know, tell all about the car, which is very exciting because, uh, again, I think there's a lot of people out there, including myself, who want to know everything about this car. I, for one, have one on order, Lethal Performance Inc. We've ordered up a 2020 Shelby GT500 in the track carbon package, and that was a recommendation from uh, Billy Johnson, a good friend of mine. And uh, he basically said, if you're going to do it, do it right and order the track pack car. So uh, it cost me a little bit more than I wanted to spend on a car, but uh, thank you, Billy. I'll take your recommendation. Let's see how it works out. So it's off to uh, Sin City, Las Vegas. Uh, not sure Borat may show up. You never know. But uh, in the meantime, guys, hope you enjoy. guys it's like seven o'clock in the morning vegas time just woke up headed downstairs to the lobby gonna have me some breakfast and uh head over to uh the las vegas motor speedway see if i can drive a gt500 today let's do it This is happening. Yes. Popped into Las Vegas. A little unexpected quick trip to come and uh, see the GT500 uh, media tour. And uh, as well as they are going to be doing uh, early next week, the um, track tour. So uh, really excited to be out here. Thankfully for performance, uh, accepted me with open arms. I'm not being escorted out by security or anything like that. Uh, it is amazing to be out here. I'm almost like kind of like in shock, like a... Uh, uh, had so much going through my head coming out here uh, about whether I'd actually be able to get in here. And now I'm here and I'm like standing around all these cars that we've been hearing so much about and uh, haven't really seen yet on the streets. But, uh, you know, looking at them, being able to put my hands on them and going to be able to actually take a ride in one shortly. It's unbelievable. The feeling, I'm, just, I'm like almost in shock. So uh, anyways, just uh, bear with me. My excitement uh, for this is, is pretty awesome. I've been doing this for 15 years um, in the Ford performance uh, market, specializing in Mustang stuff. And uh, I've had most of the performance vehicles that uh, Ford has put out over the years. And uh, this is by far 
the most highly anticipated car that Ford Performance has come out with. So I'm just gonna take you a walk through here. Got a real nice display set up. Uh, it's a gorgeous day out in Vegas. The weather's perfect. The, the air is a little crisp, the sun's out, uh, but there is no wind at all, which is really nice. And uh, so pretty much set you up over here. Gonna have lunch with everyone later on. So uh, again, they've got this, uh, this car on display here on its side. So you can see the undercarriage of it and uh, get to take a look at what this car has to offer. Um, so there's a lot of things uh, that, uh, that they've got labeled here that you could take a look at. It's pretty neat seeing this car on its side and uh, underneath it exactly what the car is made up of and all the things, the engine cooler, brake ducts, um, the whole nine, check it out. Here is that uh, the DCT transmission that Tremec makes. All right, look at that. Got the, uh, the manifolds in there, the cats, mid pipe, X pipe, resonators. Um, come back to the uh, the rear end here again. Those massive brakes. Everything's all on display here. Pretty neat. Um, actually, this is my first time seeing this, and uh, this is actually the cutaway of the uh, the supercharger. Pretty neat. That is a uh, in uh, Eaton uh, TVS. Uh, 265 liter and um, it's the upside down version so as you can see here is the the lid on it um, the supercharger basically the air uh, you know this spins here supercharger pulley rotors compresses the air flows up through the intercooler here and flows back down into the the heads um, pretty neat I've never seen the cutaway before so that's the first time uh, seeing this one pretty sweet what up Las Vegas Motor Speedway, sitting in the Shelby 2020 GT500. Gonna take a drive with my boy, Mr. Billy Johnson. Let's do it. Let's take a ride, man. Let's see here. Does this have the massagers in here and stuff like that on the uh, seats or no? No. <laughs> More performance. We're, we're in a, a track uh, uh, carbon package here. This. We, that's it. We are what? Track pack. Yep, with the technically it's a GT500 carbon package, which is a track or the track package. Carbon fiber wheels, carbon fiber wing, front splitter, uh, track tuned suspension, a more track focused suspension, and and basically the the badass. <laughs> the, badass the, the version one. that you talked me into buying. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is the one. If you have the means, I highly recommend yeah. it. No, for, forget the uh, seventy something thousand dollar Mustang. Just let's go go for the one that's like closer to a hundred. Why not, right? Well, you're gonna have to spend exponentially more to try to get the same performance anywhere else so Got it. this is uh one hell of a bang for the buck i'm excited let's do it let's uh let's take a ride tell me about this car while we cruise around uh, this is pretty funny i gotta move up guys I'm a, I'm a midget everyone gives me such a hard time about that um that i'm so small but so you're firing up for the first time let's do it yeah let's do it nice awesome sounds great that rumble got the exhaust modes yep sport mode track mode got exhaust. it there's a uh, uh, speaking with the guys over there developers uh what, what are those uh, gentlemen's name again it was um steve thompson and jeff Browder. awesome yeah and they were saying there's four different modes on that on the actual exhaust as opposed to the uh 350 head what uh yeah loud and quiet and then uh gt500 has four modes awesome and here we are the dial that's the <laughs> the dial is uh i'm excited i like the dial i don't have my shifter mod here to put over it or anything like that but this car is sick how it is so let's uh the, you don't never so yeah put it into drive and then a drive just but then when you want to have uh more fun you hit that m button in the middle and then you do the paddle and then you do the the paddles right behind the wheel awesome Zach, you hey. okay there, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Zach from Tremec, Mike <laughs> from Tremec. Hey. Yes, out here, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and there is the, uh, uh, I guess they get that, what, is it a Navy base or something like that, or Air yeah, Force yeah, base? Yeah, Air, Air Force base. Air Force base, sweet. Yeah, so, well, this is this was the main topic, is the, the dial, sure. and sure. the yeah. thing behind the dial is yeah. this, um, which is the 
which is the TR9070 DCT. Got it. TR9070 yeah. DCT. Yep. All right. So people were like, what's the difference between what's is it? It's an auto, right? It's an auto. Is it's it an a, auto? It's a manual gearbox that is hydraulically actuated. Yep. Manual gearbox. Yep. Hydraulic. So the difference between this and a normal step automatic transmission is a normal step automatic transmission has similar clutch plates as we have, except mm -hmm. they use those to engage every gear. So there's any number of clutch packs throughout the whole transmission. For this, we only have the two. So we have the even clutch pack is this first one. I'm sorry, odd. No, even is the first one. Odd is the second clutch pack. And each of these are connected to the even gear set and the odd gear set. So when you have one gear engaged, you can always have the next gear that you're about to go to already pre-selected. So that clutch is already spinning at the appropriate speed. So then you just have to let go of the one, engage the other one. It's, it's technology, man. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, like it's so advanced. And people don't realize how lucky they are to actually have something like this in this car. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they will see though, Soon, once they start showing up, on you know, when real people start taking delivery of these cars, yeah. But the guys who are involved in it and been testing and driving these cars know what the deal is, yeah, you know, for sure. In place of a manual or instead of just a normal step automatic transmission, is you have the maximum performance aspect, but you also still have the fun to drive that you're kind of missing out on with a normal manual transmission. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm with those guys, I love driving manual transmission, it's super fun. Um, so this doesn't directly replace that, but once you get behind the wheel of this thing, yeah, it is right there with it. It's just yeah. a different experience, but it's just as fun to drive. Just being up the, the whole shifting part, you know, say like every every time, at least for like the performance vehicles, you take it to a, a drag strip or whatever, or even just racing the car. Mm -hmm. You know, people always complain about, oh, I missed a shift. Like I locked out of this gear. I, I you know, what I mean, mm -hmm. the, right. this gear, you know, locked me out or whatever it is. It's, it's not shifting right. It's like, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Don't have to worry yeah. about this thing, this thing is just banging gears on its own yep pedal to the floor and and rock and roll with it right yeah and the great thing about just how we were able to calibrate it is you have the entire spectrum of what this thing can do so you just if you want to drive to the office and not worry about it you throw it in normal mode you don't even feel the shifts smooth as butter um, if you want an actual fun to drive experience you throw it into sport mode you have shifts as, shifts as fast as 80 milliseconds um, and you really feel the shift, you feel it in your butt, you hear the exhaust pop, uh, you can see the tack, which isn't artificially fast, but mm -hmm. it's just accurate. So 80 milliseconds is fast enough by itself. Um, but then if you actually throw it into tractor drag mode, um, it's kind of confusing because they're more performance oriented shifts, which doesn't mean the fastest shifts. Um, so if you take it out to the drag strip, um, you do a performance launch and you're going. Uh, what we do is kind of more like what a power shift is in a manual transmission, uh -huh. except you don't have the cons of what you do in a manual transmission. So what we do, when you do an upshift, you can do that one of two ways. One, you can take the energy out of the engine to drop that engine speed and drop it in a new gear, and that's what we do to achieve the 80 millisecond times. Um, the other way to do that is to actually apply what we call an over torque shift, where we over apply the pressure on the ongoing clutch to help pull that engine down. And so it's a little bit longer shift, but you're using the inertia of the engine to actually provide sort of an acceleration pulse to the rear wheels. So it's more efficient shift. Um, performance wise, yeah, and okay. acceleration wise. So even the 80 millisecond shift, there's a really brief little blip in acceleration, which for performance isn't that great. It's mm -hmm. not, it's still way better than a slow shift that has a much bigger acceleration dip. It's really small. Um, but with the over torque shifts, you actually have a bump up in acceleration, which over the course of a quarter mile, you save about 200 milliseconds. So, Crazy. about a, two tenths of a second you save. Um, so you were talking about, it's interesting because you have the, the tuning aspect of it, because this is a completely new setup for a car yeah. like this. So not only there's the engine side of it, the big factor is the tuning of this, the calibration of the actual transmission to work with that. Yeah, exactly. So myself and then one other guy, Justin, uh, we actually work. <laughs> yes. Fighter jets. Hey, I don't mind. I don't mind fighter jets interrupting our video. <laughs> but you know, cheers to all the U.S. military out there. All you guys out there support us and some of that. Thank you guys. We support you. Yeah, that's awesome, right? Yeah. Interrupted by by a fighter jet. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't matter to me. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, the the, uh, the so tuning of it. Justin, the two of us actually work at the Ford Performance Building with these guys. So we live there every day. We're maybe at our main office in Wixom once a month. Um, but for the most part, we're working 
exciting drive play with the Martin Forms guys day in, day out. We're going to all the track events with them. Um, if you talk to Billy Johnson or any of our vehicle dynamics engineers who are out there driving these things, we really tune in. So I was just talking about the shift quality aspect uh -huh. of it, uh, but the shift scheduling is just as important for getting your lap times. Um, so we work very closely with them to essentially mimic exactly what they would do driving the car manually with the paddles. Mm -hmm. You'll get the exact same shift schedule in automatic mode. Okay. So. Um, curious about, I mean, obviously we've got it going in a car with 760 horsepower, right? Um, you know people are going to be turning the cars up whether they're putting, you know, aftermarket supercharger pulleys on there, or, you know, yeah. headers, make sure. another supercharger maybe down the road, you know, uh, you know, you guys feel comfortable with like, you know, what do you think, uh, it, I mean, it's gonna handle? We were actually just meeting up with Shelby American earlier this week to talk about that specific thing with them. Um, it's definitely doable. Um, there's some just hardware limitations, especially in the lower gears, mm -hmm. um, but there, it doesn't really matter anyway. You can't put half of it down, you know? Um, so there is some torque truncation that happens in the lowest gears, um, but then beyond that, it does take a retune of the TCM mm -hmm. uh, if you want to increase the limits. Which yeah, we're not uh, quite ready for that yet, but okay. it's something we're going to be looking into now at this point. Yeah. Now that this is getting out in the market, you guys are going to um, have to get ready. I'm gonna be calling on yeah, you. I'm, yeah. I'm re yeah, there's there's plenty of people are going to be calling on you guys to help yeah, out with right. that stuff because oh, yeah. you know people are going to want to turn it up. I mean, yeah, it, on my side of the the industry, I mean, you know, this everyone loves the car how yeah. it is, but you so know, probably <laughs> actually just as important as the transmission limits are when you do change anything on the engine side. The TCM and the PCM, the powertrain control module, are talking constantly. Mm -hmm. And to get those 80 millisecond shifts, to get those awesome over torque shifts, we need to know what the engine's doing. They need to know what we're asking of them to be able to do it for us. Mm -hmm. um, so to get those 80 millisecond shifts, we're sending them a torque down request, a torque truncation request for a 50 millisecond window. And they need to do it exactly when we want and bring the torque back up. So if you retune the engine and you don't worry about re recalibrating uh -huh. for that new power it's yeah gonna, you gotta re you gotta retune well. this as well yeah this has got to be exactly. retuned that's a uh, in the engine has to the pcm has to give us an accurate torque rating. got yeah, it okay yes yeah, so that's yeah. probably the most important thing is that the engine torque signals are accurate um especially from a drivability perspective otherwise yeah. you do that and the trans and PCM just won't talk very we, well together. You so. know, soon enough, there people are going to be trying to make a thousand yeah, thousand yeah. wheel horsepower out of these things. You know what I mean? So I yeah, to see how it goes. But yep. yeah, there's definitely going to have to be. It's going to take a little bit more than people are used to with just manual transmissions. <laughs> so. Great setting here. Um, there's a ton of cars out here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And um, I did an event like this with the GT350 down in Sebring. It was pretty badass. They invited like the uh, previous owners, current owners of their performance cars out to uh, have you take the car around the track, speak to the developers, you know, get a, a little better inside look about the vehicle. I think it's great. And the fact that I'm out here for the 2020 Shelby GT500 is pretty awesome. So. Thanks to everyone who made that possible. I, uh, I really appreciate uh, the ability to be here and, uh, and do this. So I'm in the car and I'm gonna take it for a little ride. And uh, it is my first time driving a 2020 Shelby GT500. Pretty awesome. And there's no way I'm gonna outdrive you in this thing. <laughs> At all. So right now we're in normal mode for suspension, shifting, ride quality, throttle response. And that's what you do basically, just normal like street driving, traveling around, basically keeping a normal mode. Um, so if you, you said now we've got a couple different, the mode, the other mode would be the like manual, right? Or for you, shifting, there's for manual. Shifting. And then yeah. for the chassis, there's uh, normal, sport, track, slippery, drag, I think that's all the drive modes for suspension, throttle response, steering. Have you tested all the different modes and uh, do you like notice a big difference from one to the other? Absolutely, there's definitely a, a big difference between all the modes and they really are uh, tuned for the purposes of, of their name. And uh, for track driving, obviously you want to have it in track mode. For street driving, performance spirited street driving, you put it in sport or you could put it in track.
Let's what throw it, it in sport mode right now. Okay. So we uh, just go to the modes right here. Yep. So down here, just like on our 18. Okay, that's normal, and there's sport. All right. You guys know I'm gonna be doing some donuts here in this car in a moment. <laughs> there's no, is the security around or no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it does, uh, yeah, the car drives great, man. It's just super smooth. <laughs> uh, it's funny, everyone who's watched my, my reviews and stuff, when I do like, a, I did a Whipple review about that. <laughs> I didn't get on it once. I don't like to drive super fast, guys, all right? <laughs> the guy who's in this seat right here next to me, Billy, he likes to drive really fast. I'm, I'm like an old man driving the car. I, I just. I'm a cruiser. I, seriously, that's. I'm the guy that when you know, when I'm like older, you're, you're gonna be honking at. Get out of the way! <laughs> barely looking over the steering wheel and stuff. I'm barely looking over the wheel now, but. Oh, you can hear that. Yep. Yeah. You hear the little uh, the whine from that supercharger. So that was uh, that was sport, and you basically you could definitely feel the like the higher higher revs, similar to sport on the other side. So, so now flip it to track. Track mode. Okay. Sport and track. Got it. And there is a drag mode on here too. It looks there like. Is. Yeah. yeah. It softens the rear suspension. It tunes the suspension for the best launches. Okay. Awesome. So we are in a uh, track now. So this is like road course type stuff. Yeah. So epic. And we have like fighter jets flying around here, man. I don't know if you can see that. On rail. Looks like a F-16. Yeah. Shout out to all uh, all our fans and followers in the U.S. military. We appreciate your support, guys. Definitely. Yeah, Thank there's, you. there's a base right here. Thank you, guys, for everything you do for our, our country. We really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. It's, uh, I mean, it's just, these guys do a great job, man. This has been, you know, again, my, my livelihood for the past 15 years and stuff, man. And the, your, your driving and involvement with them is, is pretty awesome, too, man. I, uh... I love it, man. It's it's just a, a great feeling that I have right now, being out here, sitting in this car, talking with you, sharing this with all our fans out there, because you guys, a lot of people don't see this side of it. You know, they always just see the release of a car or, or, or its performance numbers or something like that. They don't get to see that what is involved in making something like this happen. It is and a lot of so work. much to it. And that's just a crucial part of this car. That was a crucial part of the GT350R being such a world-class, competent performance car. Same thing with the Ford GT. That was the second car that had carbon fiber wheels. Uh, so yeah, the GT350R was the first mass-produced car to use carbon fiber wheels. So mad props to Ford to have the balls to say, hey, we're, yeah. we're going to be the first to do this. And, yeah, I mean, and it paid stuff's off. not cheap. You know, yeah. it's, it's not cheap, but there's the, there is, they're worth it performance-wise. Performance, have... feel, steering feel, communication, everything. When you have a stiff wheel, and it's not just the lightweight, it's the stiffness of the wheel, that is steering response, that is feedback, that is grip. Because if the wheel is not flexing and rolling over, you have mm. more effective camber, and then that means you could design a tire to then and that's another thing what Michelin does you design tires for specific cars and the way they react so if you don't have limitations in a flexing wheel and you have a super stiff wheel then Michelin can design the tire to not have as many compromises be, to make up for what the wheels doing so if you have a better wheel then Michelin has a bigger envelope to make their tires even better which means the car is even better and it's just it's a crazy. snowball effect yeah, well, and that's just a wheel and tire but they're car. not just wheels. Oh, no, it's like, yeah, like it's, it's, but it's like <laughs> everything. But that, like, that's just one part of it, though. Yes. That plays into everything else, though. That's on the car, you know. And that's there's so much to it. And then just the tuning of that. When you have better wheels and tires, then you can tune the suspension in ways that aren't possible with traditional aluminum wheels. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you have the aerodynamics and the aerodynamic loads and the fact that this. The wing on this carbon pack car is essentially identical to the GT4 Mustang wing, so that is yeah, race technology yep. to the, that Down comes force. to production. And the GT4 wing, this wing's profile is essentially the same wing profile as the Ford GT Le Mans winning car. So there's a lot tied into what is on this GT500, and then you have 
a super cool, I think a super cool hood vent. I, am, I like it a lot, man. Yeah. That creates a lot of downforce. That's a key part of the aero balance of the car, the front splitter wickers, you name it. Like it's just all this stuff ties together and works together yeah. as a system. I love the looks of this vehicle, man. It, it's really awesome, man. You're just just sitting here. So how's the sight line with the the little bit larger hood? It's uh, a like little bit it. more pronounced. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm a. Uh, I mean, like on our on our car right now, we've got a, a cowl hood, like a I think it's a four inch cowl hood yeah. on there. So and it's it's a lot higher than this. This, you know, comes up just enough. You could see you have that look right there, man. But you still have full sight of everything. It's it's really clear. You that know, was right? uh, kind of a funny thing to mention because. One of the early renditions of the hood was larger like a cowl induction hood, but but it was still vented and it hurt the, the sight line. So mm -hmm. for road course, dra for drag racing, it feels awesome. It feels like yeah, pro mod, cool. feels like uh, that Race essence, car. but you put that on a road course and there's a lot of problems with that. So then after uh, a bunch of discussion and everything, the hood shape was lowered down to where it is now, so it doesn't hurt that sight line, so it gives you a good sight reference when you're driving on a, a road course. And uh, yeah, like there's there's so much that comes into the development of all these different aspects of the car that previously, if you're not involved, you'd never know in, about any of that, but then to be involved with it, to know that, I think it's super cool. for two with my man Billy in a 2020 Shelby GT500. Oh yeah. Woo! Yes! Can you show me how it's done? Yeah. So you're going in track mode. Track mode and I'm turning off all stability control systems. Just so you can see how well it pushes down power without the help of electronics. And then also so we can have a little bit of unbridled fun. This is a treat. Look at this scenery, man. Fighter jets in the background. We got mountains. Las Vegas right out to the right. <laughs>
fast, man. Yeah. This is supercar performance. So to do that in a car with a weight distribution, not ideal for that, like mid-engine cars trail brake oversteer really well. Front engine cars, it's more challenging, but for this car to do it so effortlessly like this, just a little flick. <laughs> I can't wait till we get this when we get our car to go yeah. out the PBIR together. Oh, yeah. And we're going to tear it up, man. Definitely. We're going to beat the crap out of that car. That's sick. So awesome. Wow, man. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Man, you're, you're all right, right, man. You're all right, dude. You're okay, We're man. Fine.